one of the women that we interviewed it was telling us that when she lived in Somalia, it was like living in darkness, that her fear for her own safety and her fear for her family were so overwhelming, she felt like she was literally living in darkness every day. And coming to Kenya for her was like coming into the light. There was a hospital if someone was sick, there was school for her children to go to, and she saw that there was hope that they could have a better future. Dadaab Refugee Camp, which is in Kenya on the border with Somalia, is one of the largest refugee camps in the world. It's housed up to half a million people at a time. We've been working in Dadaab since 1992. Early 2016, the Kenyan government announced that they wanted to close Dadaab Refugee Camp. And what this means is that the Somali refugees will have to return to Somalia. The United Nations and the Kenyan governments and Somali governments were discussing plans for repatriation, but no one was really involving refugees themselves in the conversation. So MSF decided to do a study where we looked at specifically what the thoughts and opinions are of Somali refugees. People are really afraid to go back. In fact, 86% of the people we talked to in the survey said they do not want to go back to Somalia. They won't have access to education for their children. They won't have access to a functioning healthcare system. We treat a lot of people with chronic illnesses and they're very afraid. A return to Somalia, it's not a return for them. They've never actually been to Somalia. They're not going to be able to return to land or a home or a school or a health system that they already know. We had about 97% of the population tell us that they were fearful for their young men to be kidnapped into the militias or if they were fearful about young women being exposed to sexual violence and forced marriage. For me, I work with a lot of refugees, not just as an aid worker who's providing health services to them, but I work with refugees as my colleagues. And I think we often forget that refugees are also doctors and nurses and engineers and teachers. They're people with education and skills who've been forced to leave their home because it wasn't safe anymore. Often the people who are running our hospitals and our clinics who are working as MSF staff are themselves refugees. They've experienced the same trauma and the same violence as the population they're serving. We forget that refugees aren't just a helpless victim, but they're human beings with agency and ability.